Hello and welcome back to the top 16 of the World Cup of Pokemon VGC hosted by Richard Road. Uh, my name is Jamie Boyd and I'm going to be joined by Evan Wang for the first time. So I am very excited to cast with you. Yeah, Jamie, like I have a lot of um, checklists off my bucket list. I went to London and I managed to meet you at Worlds. So that was a pleasure. And last year when I played in the World Cup, I um, noticed that you guys were casting it so regularly and I really look up to you guys um, for doing so and finally being um, put here in this position, this, in this chair to be able to cast with you. Um, it's just an honour on my side. Um, like, the, there are the matches that we saw earlier from Poland and Argentina. Uh, it's actually part of the same bracket with um, Thailand and Japan um, that we are going to watch next. So if um, whoever comes out from Poland and Argentina will have to fight against um, either Thailand uh, or Japan. So it's very interesting for us to bring you these matches from that corner of the bracket. Yeah, so we can have a look at uh, how the matches are going at the moment to see who is potentially going to into that top eight. And at the moment, Thailand are up 2-0 over Japan. A very interesting result there. Uh, so uh, go going to have the momentum go coming up for Thailand. A shocker to some of the, the fans from Japan. So Thailand being up 2-0, a really commanding position and um, helps boost the morale of the players. Let's take a look at the players in front of us. I uh, did a little bit of homework and all seven players from Japan were at Worlds this year. So, uh, and six of them made day two. And um, a, bit, a bit even further, two players managed to top cut. So we have Ko Tsukide in the third spot and Yuma Kinugawa, who both um, ended up at top 16 in the world's bracket this year. And there are also um, two players that got, no, three players that got a 4-3 record. So they were this close at making top cut. And finally, Kentaro. Kentaro also had a 3-4 record, but he was really high up in the um, the, the ranking, the leaderboard. So this is like an all-star cast coming out from um, Japan. And Thailand really had to um, like fight really hard to um, get these wins against their strong opponents. And from the Thailand side, these players, there are five of them that are repeated from the la from last year's um, top 16 roster. So these players are totally not strangers to a league format like this. And last year, they achieved top eight in the 2021 World Cup. It was a different format, but like the Thailand players are so consistent and really strong. Um, I've noticed them on the ladder, working very hard. And um, as a part of like Team Southeast Asia, as, as part of the Asian community, I do have a lot of respect for them. Yeah, absolutely. And since a couple of the players uh, for all Thailand were playing in the Day 2 Worlds as well, Jira Wiwat and Chai Wat uh, did make that Day 2 as well. So still some very strong players coming out for Thailand. And uh, two strong players have already managed to take care of uh, two of the Japanese players. Mm -hmm. So uh, Thailand up to 2-0 here. We're going to have to see uh, if that is going to be a 3-0 advantage to go for match point for Thailand for this match between Shohei and uh, DJ. Yep. Yeah. So DJ um, is a player that have uh, sort of joined the scene late in Sword and Shield, but throughout this season, as a new player, he's just gained a lot of experience and stepping forward to join a lot of draft leagues. I myself was once a manager for a team and DJ was part of my team and he's really consistent and he likes to bring unique teams but yet still get a lot of results from, um, from there. So uh, it's a very prominent member in the Thailand community. So not many achievements um, in official events, for example, but still a, a very strong player in the online format. So Shohei Kimura, some of us know him as Zine on Twitter. Um, here are his achievements and he's just a very prominent um, person like in live events. Uh, is if, we have, if you have seen him in person um, in the world in uh, worlds or, or maybe an international tournament so he did achieve top 16 in um the first ic in um sword and shield so the oceania ocic and then some very important like like achievements there top um 16 in naic as well so here let's go into their teams 
We can see the interesting combination coming up for DJ there, the Zashin and the Calyrex Ice. We don't see it too often paired uh, together, but uh, it's going to be coming out. And some very supportive Pokemon coming out as well. The Mimikyu, uh, the Amoongus and the Incineroar. And they just got that big powerhouse in the Regieleki. Again, somewhat of a standard team coming out from Zine's side of the field. We've seen uh, most of those Pokemon paired together uh, quite often. Uh, we've seen the Grimmsnarl over the Whimsicott occasionally on probably the most common version of that team. Uh, but Whimsicott is still going to be a Prankster Fairy that can do some very nice things for that team as well. Yeah, so Shogi Kimura used this team to uh, in at Worlds to finish 31st place with a record of 4-3. Notably also at week 2 of the World Cup, he also won, which brings his current record to 4-0. So um, Zine is actually undefeated right now. DJ on the other hand is uh, has a record of 2-1 and he's been using really interesting teams and I'm curious to see how this um, Zashan pairs well with the Calyrex um, eyes, right? And this is like the third Mimikyu we see on stream today, so it's really interesting. We see straight away the lead from DJ, um, a trick room oriented lead with Among Us and Mimikyu, and Shohei um, right off the bat with both Restricteds being really offensive with the Zashin and Kyogre. Yeah, this is pretty much guaranteed Trick Room for DJ if he just clicks that Rage Powder and Trick Room. And there's nothing that can be done with a Zashian and Kyogre lead. The Rage Powder would redirect the Zashian's attack so the Disguise would stay in place, and the Kyogre would not be able to take care of that Mimikyu before it sets the Trick Room. Uh, so if that is what DJ is opting to go for, uh, then it is just completely available for him. Uh, you'd probably even lose your Amoongus in that turn as well, giving you the switch in to most likely the Calyrex Ice waiting in the back that absolutely wants to be in the Trick Room environment. Uh, so Shohei is not going to be going on the fence there. He's going to be switching out into that Incineroar as well to try and keep that momentum, uh, try and put a stop to the Trick Room that is most likely going to be going up here. Yeah, like the a lot of positioning coming out in the first few turns with this kind of archetype um, setting up Trick Room. So the Among Us goes for that Rage Powder, being able to redirect potentially the Zashin's move. Um, Kyogre obviously goes for that Water Spout, actually doesn't do good damage into the Among Us, but more importantly breaks the Mimikyu's disguise, as we should see uh, the Mimikyu set up the Trick Room here. And on this next turn, um, there could be the pot um, potential of Spore from the Among Us, but Incinera does have Fake Out Pressure. Yeah, you can definitely just go for a fake out here. And another water spout, and the Mimikyu's not really gonna be doing too much damage to the opposing Kyogre. If it goes for a play rough, that'll do some a little bit of chip, and water spout will still be doing massive damage. Uh, Mimikyu should be able to still survive that water spout though, if it does be able, uh, able to go for a play rough to do some a uh, little bit of chip, maybe even uh, without going for a play rough at this point. Yeah, fake out is going to the Amoongo, it's gonna be putting a stop to any of those wars that can come out. Wow, an interesting Shadow Sneak actually coming out from the Mimikyu into the Incineroar, which is a bit strange. Um, this is again a Water Spout coming out from the Kyogre, but oh, couldn't take the KO onto both Pokemon. Um, the Incineroar does dip fake out into the Among Us, so we didn't see what move the Among Us came out from. But it's curious to see that uh, Mimikyu go for the Shadow Sneak into the Incineroar. I'm not sure what um, DJ was thinking there. Well, any bit of chip uh, helps. Uh, a lot of Pokemon do opt to try and survive a Calyrex Ice Rider attack, and if that Incineroar is built to survive that, it may now be in range with that tiny bit of chip that, uh, that has come out. Now you've got the Calyrex Ice Rider on the field against the Rillaboom that has just switched in. Presumably to try and catch the Spore from the opposing Kyogre, but uh, that is not the Pokemon you want to be switching into the opposing Calyrex there. Yeah, so getting the Calyrex in um, as soon as possible since Mimikyu and uh, Among Us are really passive, right? So um, DJ tries to do that, but while well, Shoei actually um, like try and call ahead of that and goes for the um, parting shot into what was once the Mimikyu and catching the Calyrex um, on the switch in, bring Calyrex down to minus one. And there's also that um, availability for the Incineroar to come back and intimidate once more. So let's see. Uh, I did not see what the Among Us did, right? I went for a spore into the the what, what was the Kyogre and hit the Rillaboom as well, and being the grass type, it was immune to that. So uh, you do get the switch into the Zashin now, and that's going to be a pretty pretty nice Pokemon to be going for a spore with, but they did get the parting shot onto the opposing Calyrex Ice, uh, so it's not going to be as offensive as it would want to be. But you could still go for a Glacier Lance or a Max Hailstorm into the Rillaboom if you wanted, that would definitely pick up the knockouts, but then Incineroar could very easily just switch mm. into that slot and get another Intimidate down onto the opposing Calyrex, and then it wouldn't be to do too much damage at all and if you switch in the incineroar and just protect your sashin then that's going to be able to store out another turn of trick room and be 
able to put a stop to the spores that can come out from the opposing Amoongus as well, uh, which you have almost been able to make it through. It is very low at this point, and Trick Room is starting to run out, so uh, it's not going to be too much longer to be able to take care of that Amoongus, but maybe not if it's going for some regenerators to get its health back and switching into that Mimikyu instead. Yeah, these first few turns coming out from Shohei is so masterful, right? Knowing that the Trick Room is going to be set up but always being able to um, recycle these fake out users to always keep the Among Us in check and over here the Calyrex was even forced to protect even in Trick Room um, from the Zashan's Beam of Blade a pretty neutral turn here being able to switch in the Mimikyu um, in for free um, like threatening some Will-O-Wisp but still you need to be aware of the Rillaboom being able to move first with that priority Grassy Glide yeah, absolutely, it should be able to pick up the knockout on the Mimikyu if you do opt to go for that. Now you have got the parting shot onto the uh, on the Cataracts as well, so Zashin would be able to survive an attack that would be coming out from the opposing Cataracts. Even if it is going for a Max Quake, you'd uh, be, most likely be able to survive that. But then you have to contend with the potential of the weakness policy on the Cataracts, which you assume is on there if the Mimikyu is just carrying Shadow Sneak. And the Mimikyu is almost certainly under speed in the Rillaboom, so it would be able to get that Shadow Sneak into the uh, Cataracts Ice if it wanted to before the Grassy Glide would hit it. Uh, but that's not what DJ is going to opt for. Instead, going to switch out the Calyrex, reset that passing shot drop, and switch into that Amoongus. Yeah, so um, Amoongus switches in. Zashin starts to turn off with that um, Protect. But Rillaboom goes before the Mimikyu, so Mimikyu would have um, chosen to do like a regular move, not Shadow Sneak. So being able to take that really quick knockout. Um, it, like, well, Shohei is just positioning so well and also being very patient. Um, to stall out Trick Room and not Dynamax so early and it feels like DJ is really struggling to get into a good position to um, start dishing out damage. Oh, but wow, the Iregi Leki is able to switch in on this turn. Yeah, that could probably do some damage. Uh, it does tend to carry the Life Orb as well, or uh, Magnets to boost its damage output. Especially on these kind of teams where it's paired with the Cataract Slice, you want a fast mode, and Regieleki is the fastest mode that's available, so uh, it can just go for the Dynamax here. The Zashians do tend to be potentially built to survive a Regieleki attack, but if you're mm -hmm. not running too much bulk and you're opting for the speed instead, then it's not able to survive that attack. Assuming it is going to be a Life Orb uh, Max Lightning coming out from the Regieleki uh, that we could be seeing, uh, that would do some massive damage to the opposing Zashian that did just protect, and Cinderor switching in would not like to take it uh, as well. Kyogre's definitely not a switch in for that attack so you've got a pretty free max lightning if you choose to uh, with the regieleki at this point it is not not going to be hitting into the opposing session at all if that's the option that's going for it is going to be the kyoga that would be a lovely target for a max lightning and so you do kind of need to dynamax the regieleki as well to keep it safe from the grassy glide that could come out from the opposing rillaboom that would ignore, ignore any rage powders that come out from the amoongus as well there is the dynamax coming out from regieleki so wanting to go for the max lightnings you'd be able to overwrite the grassy terrain as well so even if grassy glide hits the regieleki this turn it would be able to survive thanks to that Dynamax and then overwrite the, the grassy terrain with the electric terrain and stop that priority in the future. Yeah, out of all these turns of Trick Room, only the Mimikyu went down, but DJ was just able to bring the Reggie Leki in on a very important moment to Dynamax out of Trick Room. But we also see a Dynamax in response coming out from Shohei. It might make sense because uh, GMAX drums solo into the Reggie Leki. Reggie Leki does not have much HP, right? It could, have, it could be a very interesting move to be able to take it down rather than use the um, Grassy Glide. So, and also like a Life Orb Reggie Leki. It does make sense on this team. Among Us actually goes for the Rage Powder to probably redirect the Zashian's move, but um, here comes the Max Lightning with the Assault Vest. Um, Kyoko isn't able to take that at all. Um, Reggie Lucky takes one important KO here, but wow, this uh, adaptation of the Dynamax Real Boom, I'm curious to see how much damage it can do. Yeah, it's going to be doing a lot of damage, and so with that little chip of the Life Orb as well into Regieleki. Ooh. Maybe it's Max Quake coming out from the Arilla Boom said, but no, the Regieleki is bulky enough to be able to survive that attack. That was a very smart Dynamax from the Arilla Boom. now it's got the Max Quake boost. It's going to be able to completely shrug off anything that the Regieleki would want to go for. It gets to completely ignore the Amoongus' Rage Powder and Spores as well. Uh, spores won't even be able to hit the field anymore thanks to that Electric Train being set by the Regieleki, so you can switch into the Zashin and Incineroar. Uh, pretty pretty safely in front of that Amoongus now. Either Pokemon would be in range of a Max Lightning, especially with the Electric Terrain being up. Incineroar would have probably been able to survive normally, but now the Electric Terrain is going to get that extra boost. Uh, there's no way it's going to be able to survive without an Assault Vest. So uh, really, you just switch in a Pokemon and it's going to probably just get Max Lightning at this point. Uh, if you bring Incineroar, it's not going to be able to protect. So that might be why we're seeing Shohei 
Moving in the Zashin here, uh, you can very easily go for a Protect with the Zashin to be able to stall out one of those turns of Max Lightnings. You just ignore the Amoogus completely with the Rillaboom and just target down the Regieleki with the Max Quakes or with the Bajimax Drum Solo, whichever one you want to go for. Yeah, really interesting strategies coming out from both sides and it really does make sense to bring a Pokemon that can protect to stall out another turn of Dynamax and for this um, Rillaboom to like maybe take the second hit onto the Reggie Lecky to take it out. From DJ's side, it's also interesting that he did not bring Zashin. So we know that the um, Calyrex Ice is in the back. So um, trying to pivot into a position where the Dynamax Reggie Lecky makes as much impact as possible is quite interesting. So let's see if he protects the Reggie Lecky on this second turn of Dynamax to make as much impact as possible, right? Because it does make sense for the Zashin to protect. And yeah, sure enough, we do see that Max Guard here. So it's important for the Reggie Lecky to maximize these Max turns and take as much as many KOs as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And so, yeah, there is the, the max move into the opposing Regieleki. Uh, so it is able to survive this turn and just go for a max lightning pretty safely at this point into the opposing session slot. I uh, could go for a double protect to try and stall out the last turn. Uh, you could even switch into the Incineroar to just preserve the Zashin because you do want the Zashin to be able to take care of the opposing Cadarex. Mm -hmm. is your best answer on the team to be able to pick up that knockout and yeah there is the switch out of the Zashin into the opposing Incineroar. Most likely going to drop to this max lightning that is almost certainly coming its way. Oh, what a cool match to, to be casting, right? For as, as us casters, just, the players are really just thinking turns ahead and kind of playing the chess game to maneuver and, and get the correct pieces to clean up the end games. This Max Lightning obviously takes out the Incineroar with that life orb, but importantly, you have that Zashan in the back to keep the Calyrex Ice in check. The Calyrex Ice's job is to keep the Rillabooms, uh, keep the Rillaboom in check, right? But you always have that Zashan to um, threaten it in the back. You do have the Among Us to um, redirect moves, right, from the Zashan. So this is a very interesting end game as both players are down to just two Pokemon per a piece. Yeah, but there is the Trick Room coming out from the Calyrex. That's absolutely what you want to see on DJ's side of the field. Uh, the electric train being set up is a little bit awkward for the Amoongus that is going to mm. be able to switch in because uh, you would be able to completely safely go for a sport into the Zashian and a Glacial Lance and then there's just absolutely nothing that can be done from Shohei's side of the field. Uh, but that electric terrain, at least it's going to be able to put a stop to the priority grassy glides but being able to sport would have been much more useful at this point. Uh, but you can still just go for high horsepower into the opposing Zashian. You can go for the Rage Powder to keep the Calyrex safe. Two high horsepower should be enough to pick up the knockout on that opposing Zashin as well. But we'll have to see if there's anything that can proc the weakness policy that is assumedly on that Cataract based on the Shadow Sneak on the Mimikyu. Uh, some Amoogus do can tend to carry the move Hex that is able to activate the weakness policy. If that's available in the Amoogus, that will be able to activate that weakness policy. Otherwise, it's probably just going to be able to go for Rage Powders here to keep the uh, keep the, keep the Cataract safe. Oh. But there was an attack that was almost certainly the Hex. I can't read Japanese too well at this point, uh, but that is a weakness policy activated on the Cataract. That is a high horsepower into the Zashin and that is AKO. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, it might be um, foul play from, from the Japanese that I can read, or it might be hex. We'll never know until um, we, we confirm it from someone. But yeah, that's a very good way to activate the policy and calling the Rillabooms Protect smartly, um, going into the Zashin to take it out. Um, very good play coming out from DJ and just capitalizing off of that trick room. I think on hindsight, maybe Shohei could have found a different way to set up um, to stop trick room from happening, but it was just really hard to take out a full HP Calyrex Ice on the field. And having the um, Reggie Lecky sandwich the speeds, right, being the fastest um, and Calyrex Ice being the slowest is really tricky for Shohei's position. We do see a pollen path um, come out from the uh, Among Us into the Rillaboom slot and the Glacial Lance is easily able to take the KO. Yeah, very, very nicely done by DJ there. And able to secure the first win for Thailand. Uh, just one game away from just getting to match point against Japan of all teams. So very, very nice first game coming out. Uh, there was no real way of stopping Trick Room at all on that first turn, but it was stalled out very well. The only Pokemon that got KO'd was one of DJ's then in the Mimikyu. So uh, it would stall out the first Trick Room very nicely, but then the Regieleki coming in, like you said, just being so fast, it didn't matter that there wasn't any speed control. It's going to outspeed everything anyway. Just launched off all three of its max lightnings and then Trick Room was able to be set up for the Calyrex for the sweep. 
Yeah, just a really masterful game plan coming out from DJ's side, opting not to bring the Zashen and kind of planning ahead to get the Ilaki activated um, outside of Trick Room. So Shohei needs to... Shohei has been working so hard right at the early game to get into... Um, to stall out the Trick Room and get into a good position recycling all these fake outs. So let's see if he reverts to the same game plan um, in this game too. As we do see the same leads coming out from both players, they seem to be trusting their flowcharts and game plans here. Yeah, we still le led with um, on Shohei's side of the field, it's just a, a two Pokemon that can't stop Trick Room, so uh, DJ can once again go for that. You can switch out into the uh, Incineroar and the Rillaboom to try and pivot around again, but you could have just led with the Incineroar to be able to do that in the first place and just go for a fake out uh, and just pivot around in that regard. So uh, interesting to see the Zashin and the Kyogre still being led here, uh, but no switch outs this time. Uh, Shohei is just probably going to be going on the offensive instead. Well, it does make sense to remove the Among Us from play immediately. So Shohei is opting to do this while the Demon Blade is barely able to take the Among Us down. As the Kyogre follows up with the Water Spout, um, this is probably a good path to take. Uh, Mimikyu's Disguise gets broken but sets the Trick Room up potentially for the Calyrex Eyes to get a free switch in and make some impact. But still, I think Shohei is in a very commanding position um, even in Trick Room. Yeah, you've got the, the Cataract Slice coming in in the conditions it wants, but you've got the Incineroar still waiting in the back that can just be going for the Intimidates. Uh, that would offset the weakness spot as it can be activated somewhat. Uh, bringing in the Cataract Slice here makes perfect sense. You want to be going for the Shadow Sneak into the Cataract. Make the most of the Trick Room that has been mm. set up. The Cataract has all four turns available for it uh, to be able to go for the Trick Rooms here very safely go for the Shadow Sneak into the Calyrex. You can go for a Max Quake into either slot at this point. Kyogre is going to be carrying the Assault Burst, so that's guaranteed uh, to be able to hit into that slot. The Zacian, it, even if it protects, you still get a special defense boost to be able to shrug off the attacks coming out from the Kyogre as well. If the Incineroar switches in, doesn't really matter because you can just take care of that with the uh, Max yeah. Quake that is going to be boosted as well. So uh, still still a reasonable position for, for DJ coming out here. Shohei definitely has the tools to be able to stall out this Trick Room, but you've got to be able to weather the storm of a boosted Cataract Slice. Yeah, and a Cataract Slice that can potentially keep um, boosting if it's able to take important KOs and Shohei just needs to make a few good reads here to be able to call where the um, like where, where the max moves go and we saw earlier Shohei actually locking in the Dynamax into the Kyogre so potentially um, trying to do as much damage and keep the Calyrex Ice under control but I'm really curious to see how this plays out and whether this plan actually works you got to be able to survive somehow, and doubling your HP uh, with the Dynamax is going to be a way that you can do it. And yeah, Zashin's just going to be going for the Protect there. He wants to be able to keep it safe from the Max Quake. Uh, there's almost certainly going to be a Max Quake coming out on this turn. It's just going to be where, because you've got that Shadow Sneak into that Calyrex now. That's going to be able to activate the Weakness Policy, and then you'll be able to get your Special Defense boost up with the Max Quake. It would be a KO if it would hit into a Zashin uh, that didn't go for a Protect, and it would be a massive amount of damage onto the Kyogre if it did for that instead but it is just going to be tugging down that session still doing over half through that protect yeah and that also um like that just confirms just how powerful this cataract ice is and even if an incineroar were to switch in right and zero would probably go down because the cataract ice is boosted to plus one but wow even at plus ah oh, that was a critical hit because um being like set up being able to set up and boost the special defense is so useful but man shohei gets lucky here and does so much damage um uh, into the calyrex eyes so it's like max kind of maximizing kyogre's dynamax um turns here yeah, you'd have been able to throw off another Max Guys, uh, especially with another Max Quake that you'd have almost certainly be going for uh, on DJ's side of the field. That is a very unfortunate critical hit. That's going to be in range of a Max Geyser. Even if you get your special defense up to plus two, it's almost certainly going to be able to pick up the knockout. Switching into the Rillaboom makes sense because that is going to be the only resist to ground on Shohei's side of the field that he has brought to the match. Uh, so that would be able to take the Max Quake that could be coming out. Uh, you could be going for a Max Hailstorm into the opposing session. It was in range at this point uh, to, after taking so much damage to the Max Quake. You could cover that that Rillaboom switching with a Max Hailstorm, uh, but there is the Max Quake instead coming out uh, into that Rillaboom, still once again doing over half damage to a resist. Wow. 
Yeah, I think it's a dichotomy whether to go for the Max Hailstorm or Max Quake because you kind of know that Incineroar should be kept in the back here. Um, the Mimikyu notably went for um, Shadow Sneak earlier, so some cheap damage, but while well, unfortunate that the Calyrex Ice just goes down like that and isn't able to maximize all three turns of max moves, could only use two. So Shohei is. Um, with this lucky critical hit, um, it's just really commanding and the Kyogre just seems to be so difficult to remove now. You probably got a Regieleki waiting in the back that would be an answer, but we're in the Trick Room, so that doesn't really pan out anymore. So uh, even if it is the Zashian, that's still going to be able to be picked up by the Max Geyser, but it is still the Regieleki. You are in the Trick Room now, you just still get to just take care of the Reggie Lucky before it's able to go for any of its uh, tackle moves. Uh, Assuming it's got Rising Voltage as its offensive move, and that's not very powerful if you're not in the, the electric train, and you're not going for the Dynamax, which is no longer available. So even if the Reggie Lucky wasn't in the Trick Room, uh, it still probably wasn't going to be able to do enough damage because the Rising Voltage isn't strong enough in itself. So uh, very unfortunate for that Calyrex. It was positioned very nicely in that first turn as Ashin choosing to go on the offensive. KO the Lemungus, give the paid switch into that Calyrex. You get four turns of Trick Room with the Calyrex that is going to be consistently boosting and boosting its special defense doesn't really matter if you just ignore it with a critical hit though yeah like the it was unfortunate but i thought like shohei does have a good game plan overall because you know that mimikyu um, does not make much impact it could only just shadow sneak but it can't do damage on its part so always targeting the calyrex eyes could be a good game plan and it really worked out because you're able to always keep it in check and reduce the number of um the, the impact that calyrex eyes can put to the battle so um just overall it does make sense right to go for that game plan and for dj side like getting the Among Us, um, the Among Us being set so early is just pretty uh, disadvantageous, right? Not being able to threaten the opponent with spores or, you know, just take control of the field in Trick Room. So both players do trust their flow charts here and we do see the same leads once again for the third game in a row. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we just see Rage Powder and Trick Room once again from DJ side of the fields. But we'll have to see if Shohei is going to be going with the Game 2 plan that was able to win, uh, but didn't require a critical hit uh, to be able to achieve that. Or if they're going to go back to that Game 1 plan, start cycling uh, through the Fake Out Pokemon that could be stalling out the Trick Room once again. Because we saw a very slow first game and stalling out of the Trick Room in that first one, and then very explosive in that second game, just going on all, the, all offensive uh, while attacking with Zashi in the first turn. So uh, this first turn is going to be very crucial in this game three uh, but it looks like Shohei is going back to the game one plan yeah so bringing the Incineroar in on the Zashin slot um, to bring Mimikyu's attack down and also threaten the fake out onto the Among Us here Among Us doesn't necessarily need to go for Rich Powder as it does not so Kyoga goes for the Water Spout um, first um, Mimikyu is gonna probably nah actually Among Us should move next, so I'm curious to see what the Among Us does because a spore into either side is really impactful for DJ. And there is the sport into that Kyogre, very, very nicely done. And if the Zashin would dig on the offensive there, it wouldn't have mattered if you went for Rage Powder because Amoongus would just get KO'd to Behemoth Blade and to Water Spout regardless. If you target down the Mimikyu and stop Trick Room, that is still Kyogre put to sleep. You get the Pace Switch into the Cataracts that can still set Trick Room for itself and you just Rage Powder Trick Room against just the Zashin that is just going to be able to Behemoth Blade the Amoongus and get the KO, but then you'll still be able to get the Cataracts into Trick Room. So very, very nicely done, covering most things there that could have come out with the sport into the Kyogre and now that is a very very nice position coming out uh, for DJ side of the field the Kyogre it's not going to be able to do any damage this turn it's got the water spout off it's broken the disguise but uh, now it's not going to be a threat in anything the Mimikyu Anamungus is definitely going to make it through this turn you can very safely go for a spore into the Incineroar it's forced to fake out if it doesn't want to do that uh, it could switch out into the Rillaboom to be able to resist that spore that could be coming out as well uh, but this just uh, allows you the opportunity to uh, get those spores off in the trick room completely freely if you want and switch out into your Cataracts to start sweeping in that Trick Room. Yeah, it's really tricky for, for DJ's side to choose the correct side to switch the Cataracts eyes as he does try to take full advantage of the Trick Room turn, so switches the Mimikyu out right now. And Shohei um, has to play defensive with the Incineroar. We saw a sneak peek with the item. DJ doesn't know that it's the Chopo Berry, but still you do not want your Incineroar to get spot here. So the um, Rillaboom switching makes sense, stalling out a turn, but DJ just wastes no time to bring the um, Calyrex Ice in to make full use of the last three turns of um, Trick Room. This is naturally how this team kind of 
needs to operate and he really needs to press the dynamax button i guess to uh, make as much impact as possible as soon as he can yeah, and so he gets to make use of that for all three turns, the last turn of Trick Room, all three turns of Dimax. It is going on on the offensive here. Uh, that Calyrex doesn't want to be going for the spread damage with the Glacier Lance. That'll probably be able to pick up the knockout on the Rillaboom with just that and get some extra chip into the opposing Kyogre. But this covers the option of a fake out going into the Calyrex as well. Uh, and so if you go for the fake out into the Amoongus, then that at least puts a stop to the uh, uh, weakness policy side activation that did come out in that first game. Uh, that is what we are seeing into the opposing Amoongus. So it's just going to be a regular neutral hits coming out from the opposing Calyrex and it is going to be a max quake coming out into the uh, opposing Kyogre so that's not going to be able to pick up a knockout on either Pokemon and that stalls out another turn of Trick Room. Yeah, good damage um, all things considered but very nice to get the special defense boost off of both um, Among Us and Calyrex as Kyogre takes yet another turn of sleep. Um, chat actually confirmed just now that Among Us's move to proc the Ring's policy is indeed Hex because uh, foul play would have done way more so it's really interesting to see um, these adaptations like these moves coming out from both players right from DJ's side uh, and at first I thought like Pollen Puff could proc the policy but I realized that actually Pollen Puff heals your partner so um, yeah if, once if, again, if, like... if it healed and activated weakness <laughs> policy all in one can you imagine that would be amazing but uh, yeah having to, having to resort to just the hex that's absolutely fine it doesn't really matter what it is so long as it doesn't do too much damage to your opposing Pokemon and uh, still activates that weakness policy it is still very nice and that is still an option that DJ has available they can still just go for a hex into that Calyrex and then you pick up a KO doesn't really matter what move you click you're going to pick up a KO uh, into either slots there is no switch outs it's just the grassy glide so no incineroar switching in uh, to be able to uh, intimidate that down there uh, it is going to be plus two it's once again going to be the hex into the opposing calyrex it gets a knockout hit it doesn't really matter it just goes for a hailstorm into the uh, rillaboom or it goes for a max quake into the kyogre this is going to be enough to pick up the knockout on either pokemon here it's going to be quake into the kyogre so that is taken care of now that was the main dynamax pokemon that you'd probably want to be going for shohei was very much willing to dynamax the rillaboom that we saw in that previous this game about uh, Kyogre just staying asleep and not doing anything except for breaking the disguise on that Mimikyu and just being KO'd here. That's another boost to the Cataract. It's now at plus three. It'll probably go back, back down to plus two uh, whenever the Incineroar switches in. Uh, but that's still one more turn of Trick Room for the Cataract. It's going to be able to pick up one more KO. Yeah, so you might be wondering why the Calyrex keeps going for Max Quake instead of Max Hailstorm. But this is the beauty of this Zacian team with this Fire Water Grass core because you can always switch in um, safely or wisely into uh, a potential Max Hailstorm, right? Like from um, the Rillaboom slot, you can switch your Zacian or Incineroar in to take that move. So DJ is pretty playing pretty smartly to um, make sure he secures that KO into the Kyogre slot by always targeting the Max Quick there. So um, Shohei kind of correctly leaves the Rillaboom in to do a little bit of cheap damage with the Grassy Glide, but still, it's very tough um, going forward because having um, like limited turns of... Uh, Sorry, I mean, I mean, like the 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 Rillaboom might be able to um, have to Dynamax like towards the late game, and Shohei seems to be um, like being very patient with this. Yeah, if you switch out into the Incineroar on this turn, then you definitely get your Rillaboom out of Trick Room against the opposing Calyrex, and it is one of the nice things that can ignore the Rage Powder and just target down that Calyrex that would be using its last turn of Dynamax in the grassy terrain a Drum Solo might be enough to pick up the knockout on that opposing Calyrex because it has taken a little, little bit of chip as well. There is the Incineroar switch in so it's going to be able to uh, get the Intimidate to bring the Calyrex back down to only plus two at this point but that would be plenty regardless. A Sport into the opposing session that it did go for a Protect. Now did DJ call this switch in? It is going to be a Max Quake coming out from this Calyrex and it hits into what was the Rillaboom catching that Incineroar very very nicely. That is a KO on the, on the Incineroar and now Shohei is down to their final two Pokemon. Wow, fantastic read coming out from um, DJ. He really needed to take one more KO um, onto Shohei's team because if because after this Trick Room will run out and things will get really dicey with the Zacian always being faster and being able to um, threaten a lot of damage. So at this pivotal you know moment of game three, is able to uh, make that happen. And yeah, this seems pretty hopeful for um, DJ to be able to close out the game but um, Rillaboom still has that option to max so Shohei does play his cards well to um, still have an out towards this endgame.
Yeah, Shohei is actually in a pretty reasonable position right now, unless there's an Incineroar waiting in the back for DJ side of the field. Uh, you can just go for a Fake Out into the Amoongus and a Behemoth Blade into the Calyrex, and there's not really anything that can stop that. You can go for a Dynamax G-Max Drum Soda into the opposing uh, Calyrex if you want, and based on the previous damage, Behemoth Blade probably KOs the Amoongus as well, so there's a couple of options that Shohei can go for at this point. So you, if Trickum goes up for the Calyrex, then you're probably going to win uh, in uh, the, uh, as soon as that goes up, because you'd just be able to uh, uh, attack first with your Cataract, but doesn't really look like there's going to be a way to do that if you go for either of the options, really. Fake Out puts a stop to any of the Spores or Rage Powders, and GMX Drum Solo is probably going to be strong enough, but it uh, might be a little bit, little bit closer if it's going to be, but this is a pretty safe play right now. Uh, just going for uh, what looks to be the Fake Out coming up from Rillaboom, because there is no Dynamax, and then just a Behemoth Blade into that protecting of the Cataracts. Yeah, well, I'm curious to know what DJ's last Pokemon is. Because if it's the Incineroar, then it would just help a lot. But if it's the Reggie Lucky, then, um, you know, Shohei being really patient to, even at this turn, um, wait for a perfect moment to Dynamax would be really impactful. Oh, the Grassy Terrain actually expires on this turn. So Rillaboom's um, GMAX Drum Solo will be doing less damage. And I'm not sure if it's able to take out this um, Cataract's Eyes. Yeah, that's, that might be pretty important right there. I'm pretty confident that a drum solo in the grassy train would have been able to KO the, the Calyrex. It is a very, very powerful move. Uh, 160 base power is nothing to scoff at, especially if you're boosted in the terrain. But with that disappearing, Calyrex Ice is one of the most defensively bulky Pokemon we know. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's able to survive that attack. You could just go for the Rage Powder here. And you, then you get to go for the Trick Room. Uh, there's no priority coming out from the, the Grilla Boom. Even if it stayed in its regular form, you wouldn't be able to priority Grass Glide. So if the Trick Room goes up this turn, uh, DJ could be looking in a very, very nice position. Yep, so here comes the Behemoth Blade. We saw the damage earlier, so this will easily take out the Among Us, and this is the moment of truth. Let's see how much damage this Rillaboom can do into um, the Calyrex Eye. So here comes the G-Max Drum Solo. Yeah, isn't able to take out this Calyrex Eye, and it goes for a Glacial Lance instead. So, you know, this could be a hint that Reggie Lecky could be in the back for DJ. When it takes the one-hit KO into the Rillaboom, that's crazy. Yeah, it actually makes a lot of sense to just go on the offensive with the Calyrex there. If you go for Trick Room, uh, then you can play around it with potentially a Max Guard or potentially a Max Quake, because you've taken so much mm -hmm. damage on the Calyrex, it'll be in range of a Drum Solo or a Behemoth Blade, and then you'd be able to take care of the Regieleki. But nope, there is the Zashian waiting in the back instead. So a nice adaptation there, but didn't actually end up being too necessary, because the Zashian on uh, Shahe's side of the field had taken so much damage. If it was still the Regieleki, a Rising Voltage would have been able to pick up the KO, and you just go for Rising Voltage and Glacial Lance, and that's a guaranteed win. Instead, you're going to go for Behemoth Blade and Glacial Lance, and that's still a guaranteed win. So, uh, very, very nicely played coming out from DJ's side of the field. It did look like Shahe was in, in actually a pretty reasonable position, uh, but that Grassy Terrain running out at just the crucial moments. It would have still been very close based on the damage that's the non-terrain boosted uh, GMAX Drum Solo did if it would have been able to KO with the Grassy Terrain, but there's actually on DJ DJ side of the field, even outspeeding Shahe's one here, and just being able to pick up the knockouts. That puts Thailand at 3-0 and o over Japan. They have four match points to advance over them into the top eight. Well, Thailand is just so strong in these kind of league formats, and it really shows here against such a giant like Japan, who just seems so threatening on paper. But wow, the numbers don't lie, and we do see a 3-0, right, coming out from Thailand going into the week. It's just Friday, so still four more matches to play, and um, every match is going to be game point. Japan really needs to fight very hard, and really props to DJ for just... Um, piloting this Calyrex Ice Core very masterfully and always keeping that last Pokemon a secret in the back. Like, it wouldn't, I, I didn't even expect for it to be a Zashan and the Calyrex Ice is just able to put so much impact um, in the game uh, and even like all the way to the end of Trick Room. Yeah, it was a very nice adaptation, but wasn't actually too necessary. The Calyrex was just played so well in that, in that game three and able to position itself very nicely to be able to secure the knockout. It got the boosts and it just kept on boosting and boosting. You saw how much even the Glacial Lance did to the Sashin. It did like 75%. So yeah. uh, very, very nicely played. And Thailand coming out with uh, a very, very strong showing, just so close to making it into top eight over Japan. So uh, we'll have to keep a close eye on that one for sure. Uh, and we'll have a close eye on the final game game of today. Uh, we are going to be featuring France versus Italy. After this short break, we'll be featuring Hippolyte Bernard versus Daniele Spuntarelli.